Don't you hate it when you try to google something important and you find out that you don't have internet? Well, it happened to me. And while I was feeling like a caveman for an hour without internet, I got a bit addicted to this dinosaur game in my google browser. Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. After playing this game for quite some time, I came to the conclusion that I can really make it be something more, something more than just a 2D runner game. So let's start off by making a new Unity project. For this video, I will be using Unity's high definition render pipeline, which is a rendering pipeline designed to produce high quality graphics and visuals. Now that we have a blank project, I will start off by making the core mechanics of the game and then move on to making everything look nice. For a good start, I will first make the ground object that the player is going to move on. Let's make it a bit bigger. 15 on the X and 2000 on the Z axis. For a player object, I will be using George. I created a basic movement mechanic so that the player moves with a constant speed. And I also made it so that the camera follows the player. And if I press space, the player will also jump. Bye, have a great time! I went and fixed the code that is responsible for the player jumping. And by doing so, I also made it so that I first check if the player is on the ground or not, because I don't want the player to infinitely jump while in air, I want him to jump only if he's on the ground. And this is done with this raycast that checks if there is any collidable object within a given distance downward from the player's position. And we can now see that it is working correctly. In order for me to spawn obstacles, I added this obstacle spawner game object as a child of the player. And this game object has an attached script that would basically spawn a random obstacle from this list of obstacles on every 5 seconds. And I also have this obstacle despawner object that has a box collider attached to it with is trigger turned on. And it would basically destroy any game object, well, any obstacle game object that goes through it. Destroying the obstacles that go behind the player object and are no longer visible can really improve the game's performance because you're reducing the amount of game objects in the scene. I went and downloaded this font which I'm now using as a score counter at the top right of the screen. Now that we have the basic functionalities ready, let's see how they work. I have also made it that when the player hits an obstacle, he stops moving. Now that we have the core mechanics ready and working, let's move on to making everything look more appealing and realistic. I will start off with making the terrain. And yes, this should be it. For the creation of my terrain, I use Unity's Book of the Dead environment asset and you can check it out if you want in the Unity asset store. I had this idea from the beginning to have a forest as my terrain and I think it turned out pretty good. Let me know what you think. As I move around the camera, you can see objects appearing and disappearing. This is because I'm using level of detail. In Unity, level of detail is a technique used to optimize the performance of games by reducing the amount of detail rendered in objects that are far away from the camera. This level of detail group component that I have attached to this tree for example, allows you to define multiple levels of detail, each represented by a different mesh with a lower polygon count. Unity will automatically switch to a lower detail version of the object depending on the camera's position. To prevent the player from walking off the edge of the terrain, I have made the terrain endless so that the player will continue to move forward until he encounters an obstacle. The way I have done this is quite simple actually, you can see that I have two terrains and both of them have triggers which are box colliders placed somewhere in the middle of each terrain. And when the player reaches the trigger, the previous terrain moves after the current one. And so, we have an infinite terrain. I also imported some assets which I'm going to use for my game. One is this Velocirap, Velocirap, this dinosaur package which I'm going to be replacing George with. It is a really good asset and if you have dinosaurs in your game you should definitely check it out. For the obstacles I'm going to use this rock and stone moody pack asset and for the flying obstacles I decided to use this flying shrimp monster because I think that it really suits the game. I made sure to add ragdoll physics to our new player object. And this is the final result. Thank you guys so much for watching. I think the game turned out pretty good. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe for more content and see you in the next one.